Dr. Wankmuller, thank you very much for letting us come over to the CAT scanner room at Rideout today. It's a pleasure to have you over. Tell us a little about your background and training in radiology. Where did you go to school? I went to Jefferson uh, Medical College and then uh, to Mayo Clinic in internal medicine and then uh, fell in love with radiology in the Air Force and went to UCLA. So how right. many years is the actual training nowadays in radiology? Uh, four years. That's after medical school. Right. So you have four years of college and four years of medical school and four more years of radiology training. Right. I understand now a lot of radiologists are going out even beyond that getting other specialties in radiology. Well, you can go for another year to get uh, subspecialty. Yeah. I see. Now, you've been on our program before. You've talked to us about our oh, uh, special system for notifying people in emergencies. Uh, what was that called again? A uh, teller alert system. That's where people at home, if they would fall down or have trouble, they can push a button and that can notify emergency people, relatives, police. Yeah, that remotely operated a telephone uh, answering device and uh, sent out signals for help. So that was a very interesting program. But today we're going to talk about the CAT scanner, CAT scanner. Right. How is a CAT scanner different from a regular X-ray test? A uh, CAT scanner uses a computer to uh, take thin slices to the human body. It can take thin one, one millimeter or one centimeter slices at any section through the body and then outline the organ structures that are beneath the skin and beneath the uh, bone structures and we can uh, get detailed anatomy throughout the whole body. So what was the real breakthrough? Why did the CAT scan, when it first came out, Oh, 10, 15 years ago become such a big thing. Why was it so important? Well, the most important thing in medicine is to be able to visualize the disease process. And with x-rays, we're not able to separate muscle, organs, liver, uh, pancreas. We could not see those structures. We could see bone and uh, air and fat tissue. And we had to use contrast media to see the other structures. Now with a CAT scanner, we can take a, advantage of the very fine differences that the body absorbs the x-ray beam and, and see those differences by enhancing it with a computer. And that way we can see the pancreas and the liver, kidneys, the brain, and the various structures. So before the CAT scanner, if someone was worried about pancreatic tumor, they'd even have to go and do surgery, exploratory surgery. Right, they usually had to do surgery to be sure. And here you're able to look in those areas of the body without surgery, making it non-invasive. Right, we can see the pancreas and all those structures now. So the real breakthrough was being able to avoid invasive procedures and actually look inside. That's right. Well, that's exciting, and we're going to actually see how that's done today. Mm -hmm. As I'm standing here in the CAT scanner room, I hear this sound, like an air conditioning sound. What is that noise we're hearing? We have a, a high-intensity x-ray tube, and we have to keep it continually cool. And, uh, and that's the manufacturing device to make sure this, the tube is protected. So as a patient's getting the CAT scan done, how many actual x-ray pictures are taken during the scan? Let's say you were doing an abdominal CAT scan. Well, we take probably an average of 16 x-rays, but that would be, each one of those would be a pencil beam x-ray, which would rotate around this unit here and uh, be received by 1,200 receptors. The receptors would then go to a computer and a computer would separate out all that information and make the picture. Now, I understand that Rideout Hospital has purchased the ultimate state-of-the-art, most advanced CAT scanner that there is available. Yeah, that's correct. This is a real blessing for us. We have the top of the line Picker 1200 SX unit. Uh, this is able to give us better than one millimeter resolution with very rapid uh, films. We can do the patients much faster, plus we get much better detail, as you'll see later. Is there any CAT scanner of this quality anywhere else in this area? There's approximately 30 in Northern California. They're in major teaching centers. There's also some in a few small hospitals. But not in Yuba City or Marysville? No. So we have the state of the art here. That's fascinating to hear, too. Yeah, that's true. I understand also this is a very expensive piece of equipment, and a lot of this money was raised through the volunteers of Rideout Hospital and the other organizations that help raise money, the foundations. What approximately are we talking about in cost of equipment? Well, the list price of this unit is $1.4 million. So million dollars? $1.4 million. That's dollars. right. We'll, we'll treat it very <laughs> nicely today. Okay. Can we actually have uh, you demonstrate what happens with a patient on the machine? Uh, maybe we can have our chief x-ray tech, uh, Eamon Ferry, come in and demonstrate uh, how this is done. Well, let's have Mr. Ferry come over. I met Mr. Ferry uh, a year or so ago on the program. You uh, showed us your old CAT scanner on a previous program, didn't you? Yes, it was um, Picker 300. It was one of their smaller models. They only had a 300 detector. 
where this has 1,200 detectors, which gives us our higher resolution for our different studies. So what happened with the old machine? Traded in. Or traded in. You don't have to throw it away. It doesn't go over to the well, junkyard. They, it, um, they only made three of them, so it's um, thrown away, probably. Oh, well, or they can, maybe they can upgrade it. Who knows? Yeah, right. Can you bring a patient over, or do you have a volunteer that you I can show us? I have a volunteer. Um, Michael, would you come in, please? This is um, Michael Wintmuller. He's um, son of our radiologist. He um, reads our scans here. That's the doctor we just had on the show. Yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll be back with us in a few minutes. Yeah, he will. He'll show you some films later from different studies. Why don't you let us see how it actually works, how he goes on the table. Um, I mean, Michael, the, have you sit right here on the on the table side. Okay, have you lay on your back with your head on the pillow. Watch your feet there. Okay, and I want you to bring your arms up by your chest. Okay, now we have to bring a sheet around him so that we cover him up from any artifacts. Excuse me. This way we can, we can tuck it in. We can make sure that there's no artifacts hanging out. Okay. Just step this way. Okay. I can operate and show you how we can Great. make him more comfortable, and I can also operate the equipment. Michael, if you raise your knees up, this straightens out their backs and makes it a little bit more tolerable for them. Because there's times they have to be on the table anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour. This helps their comfort. These controls here will allow us to adjust the table to the specific height that we need. And once we reach that height, we can manually bring our patient in to the gantry and then operate it from the controls here if we need to. Okay. Something I think is really important, a lot of people have claustrophobia. It's the people that need to know is there is nothing here that will close in on them. Or yep. close down. You know, I remember the other machines seem to give me more of a feeling of claustrophobia than this one. Is there a difference, or was I just more nervous? The is a little bit smaller on the outside. The inside is the same diameter, but being back this is a smaller unit. On the outside, it makes it appear a little bit larger. Well, not only can you look inside the head, you can look inside the chest, the lungs, everything. look at the spine, everything, abdomen, all the way down through the whole body. Right. This, this, this machine with the high resolution we have with the 1200 detectors, we're able to do um, down to a nerve, one millimeter, and see that in inner ear. You can actually see the nerve in the ear. Well, Dr. Dr. Wayne will show you some pictures that you can actually see the, the bone structures of the ear. So tell us, how long does it usually take? Let's say someone had a head injury and needed their head checked for blood leaking into the brain. How long would a scan like that? We can, um, if a doctor wanted to get the patient on the table and off, we could actual scanning time would be about three minutes. We, you know, set up time of moving the patient on and off. You're probably talking 10 minutes so we can have a patient in and out. What if you were going to, for some reason, try to scan the entire body, including head, thorax of chest, and the abdomen? How long would that take? Well, that can vary depending on the, um, what the radiologist will require, whether it's injection of dye or a non-contrast. But I would say if you had to do head, chest, abdomen, pelvis, you're probably talking, you know, an hour and a half, the two, a good two hours, something like that. But in most cases, there's a specific question. Right. You wouldn't just be playing with the machine to get every no. part of the body. You, you know, we get patients here. They're for a specific region, an area of concern that the doctor's worried about or the patient has complaints about. Now, imagine a patient today uh, with an abdominal problem, has abdominal pain. His doctors ruled out stomach problems and ruled out other things, and he's worried about a pancreatic tumor, looking at the pancreas. So you'd set him up just like this. Yeah, we'd set him up just like this, because the pancreas sits right below your stomach, right between your liver and your spleen, and you set him up this way. That's an organ that the doctor cannot feel as he pushes on the abdomen. That's true. So what we're going to ask you to do is go with, to take us into the actual control room for the CAT scanner and show us how the picture from here will be transmitted through the computer in there. And let's take a look and we'll get Dr. Wangmuller to help us out too. That'd be great. Let's go over. Okay. Well, we're now in the operator's control room for the scan room. This is for the CAT scan room. Yes, it is for the CAT scan. We have two monitors here. One is the operator's monitor, one is the viewing and film monitor. So we're able to operate the scanner from this monitor, and then we're able to use our other monitor to view the image if it comes up. On the screen, the image that we need to look at, so for a best image, we should turn the lights off. I have what's called a cursor, where it is a little white X. We're able to 
use that for many different functions. Why do you point out the kidneys and the bone and spine and things like that? Well, I think um, Dr. Waitmiller, he can point out several of the things better than I can. Well, we're bringing on down here. You can see here the different densities of fat and soft tissue. Here's muscle, the paraspinal muscles in the wall. You can see that we can see the different densities very well. Here's the vertebral body. Uh, we're coming up, and this little area in the center here is the spinal cord, actually a fecal sac with the spinal nerves in it. And we can see that area pretty well too, as you'll see later. Up above it is the aorta, the main blood vessel to the body. And next to it, this thin slit is the vena cava, returning the blood back to the heart. And then on both sides here, we see just the beginning, the top part of the right kidney, and over here, the top of the left kidney, Posteriorly here, we have a little fluid collection, which we call a cyst. We can do a density reading on these and make sure that we're not dealing with a small tumor. And then next to it is an organ which we are very concerned with here in uh, car accidents and football accidents is the spleen. And a CAT scan can show us if there's a, a rupture of the spleen or a hematoma. And I think that's probably on this cut. Actually here, I think we're seeing a little bit of the adrenal gland too. And this, uh, the scanner is excellent for seeing adrenal tumors uh, in patients that have Cushing syndrome or hypertension and other, other areas of concern for uh, evaluating the adrenal gland. I understand, Dr. Wankmuller, that not only can you then use this screen, but you can actually take pictures and we can look at them on an x-ray screen as well. I mean, just a, a reading screen that are still pictures. Yeah, we can take uh, pictures of this. We can also uh, blow an area up and uh, magnify it and get a better detailed look at it. Let's go over to your reading room and take a look at some of these. Okay, fine. Dr. Whitemiller, you've set up for us some views of uh, actually the inside of the skull and the ear areas, looking at different organs and things. Can you show us first on the skull itself, an actual skull, what we'll be looking at? Yeah, I think it'll help us orient to what we're going to be looking at here. Okay, here is the external auditory canal, actually the part that's the opening in your outside of your head for hearing. But as we rotate this around, we'll see that inside, there's a bone structure called the petrous bone, and there's little canals in here called the semicircular canals. And below that is the cochlea. The semicircular canals are used for balance. The cochlea is used for hearing, the fluid compartment, and then in here also is the uh, small bones of the ear, and we're going to see those now on a CT scan. You can see one of the semicircular canals here. We see the nice dense bone around it, and uh, we see again the uh, bones in the uh, middle ear for hearing. So actually the ear, nose, and throat doctors can make use of this tool, the CAT scanner. Yeah, it's very valuable because uh, hearing loss is a very common problem and can help to uh, determine where the problem is. It's amazing to me how many specialties can use the CAT scanner. You're just, you're just switching from one to another to another. You mentioned kidney specialists, bone specialists, back specialists, nerve specialists. There's yeah, it's 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 pediatrics, it's endless. It's endless. It's yeah. fantastic. And we can image the entire body in, in every age group, which is a big, big help. Any use of it in dermatology yet? You can see your organs, but they can't see the organs below that. That's true. We don't need a non-invasive skin examining technique. We can use our eyes to do that. That's right. One reason I like dermatology, I don't have to come you over and use all, all that. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much for letting us Pleasure come over today, and we'll be back. Fine. Thank you. Again, I'd like to thank Bi-County Radiology and the staff of the X-ray department at Rideout for allowing the Medical Explorer to travel behind the scenes of their CAT scanner department. If you have questions about the use of a CAT scanner for your own medical evalu evaluation, then you'll need to discuss them further with your personal physician. Remember, only a licensed medical doctor can authorize you to have a CAT scan. Well, that's our program for tonight. I'd like to invite you to write to me at my dermatology and allergy office in Yuba City with your suggestions for areas and people that you'd like to see on this program. As you know, our program is a public service one, and I really would want to hear from you with your comments and suggestions. Please write to me at the Skin and Allergy Medical Group of Yuba City at 367 Del Norte Avenue, Suite Number 4, 95991. In my next program, The Medical Explorer will take you behind the scenes of more interesting frontiers of medical care practices right here in Yuba City and Marysville. Till next time, I'm Dr. Robert Peppercorn, your Medical Explorer. Thank you for joining us tonight, and have a good evening.